Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Today is Wednesday, July 29th. Um, it's been a few weeks since I have recorded and I wanted to give you guys a couple of updates about that. I took myself off of a weekly schedule um, for a couple different reasons, but um, more importantly, uh, trading um, is a marathon and so much like trading I'm going to be trading YouTube as a marathon and I thought that it would be um, a better endeavor for myself as well as for you if I um, kind of took the pressure off of myself to come up with uh, content on a weekly basis there's a lot of information to be learned about options trading but it doesn't need to be crammed into a short period of time I think that this will better serve both me and um, provide some better quality content for you as as well as better serve you as well because options trading is a long-term endeavor for me and I'm going to treat YouTube similarly. Um, so I'm off of a weekly schedule. I am going to continue to create videos, but I can't really guarantee um, sort of the frequency with which they'll come out. I, 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 I will aim for one to two times per month, but um, at a minimum one time per month for sure. Um, Another reason why I did that is because I started up a small um, handmade soap business. If you're interested in learning about that, check out my soap channel. It is connected to this uh, YouTube channel. If you just click on channels, you'll see um, that soap channel as well. If you are interested, if not, don't worry about it. I won't be talking about soap on an options trading channel. But it did take up a lot of my time, so I'm balancing a couple of different things right now, including um, you know, getting that business up and running as well as the, this YouTube channel, that YouTube channel, and also balancing a day job. So there's a lot going on over here. Um, I am sort of at this point in my life where I'm tr trying to put myself in a position where I'm working on a lot of the things that I really love and want to do and not just because I have to do them. And so I'm, I am, um, I'm, trying to reprioritize some of the things that are happening here. And I can only thank COVID for that because I've had a lot of time to sit and think about it. Um, okay, so some quick account updates. It's been a few weeks since I put on the Lululemon and the IWM trade. And as you can see, they're doing pretty well. Um, I opened each of these for $96 and they are both beyond our 50% um, profit potential. So I'm gonna try to close these today as is. Um, if you recall, you can set a limit order if you want. You can go up or down, but I'm just going to try to close at the midpoint today. The bids and the asks are a little wide, so it might get filled. It might not. Let's see what happens. Um, I will realize a $68 profit, less, less a few um, dollars in fees overall, and it'll increase the buying power by $221.71. And the same thing with IWM. These are a little bit tighter, so it is more likely to get filled today at the midpoint. Realize a $60 profit and it will increase the buying power by 213.71. Okay, so I'm gonna let those work. Um, I deposited another $250 at the regular monthly interval, so the total Deposits for this account right now are $1,500. The total credit collected is $515.78. That will change a little bit once these two positions close. So as you can see, they're both currently hanging out at the midpoint right now. I'm not going to force this by increasing the amount of debit to take out. Um, but if that is something that you want to do because you want to get out of the trade faster, that is an option for you. I would recommend increasing it by a penny at a time. Don't do anything like $5 at a time because then you are potentially uh, closing it out for less profit than you would rightfully deserve. Um, I'm going to let these work for now and I will um, sort of explore whether or not another trade is in order for today. But I wanted to talk to you very quickly about another options metric that I don't think I've mentioned much on this channel, but I got a comment um, in the last couple of weeks about, about open interest and volume. And it sort of left me thinking about this topic generally and how um, it's not often discussed, but um, open interest and volume 
are two indicators that you can use to assess the liquidity of an options contract. And so what this means is that if you are reviewing these two indicators you, and, and you can assess how liquid a stock option is, you will be able to determine whether you will get um, into and out of your trade at a, at a fairer price. And what I mean by that is options with low volume and low open interest tend to have wider bids and ask spreads. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Lululemon has looks like kind of a wide bid ask right now. This is an indicator that there might be a little bit less volume or open interest. And if you want to check out where that is in the Tastyworks platform, you can change your graph down here. You can check out volume and then you can change it to open interest. And so you can see there is some open interest here but the volume is a little bit low for today. And um, I will go over that in just a second. So basically open interest is the number of contracts that are currently open or outstanding. Um, what I mean is they have, they've not been closed or they're not assigned. And so open interest is a number that can go up and down or stay flat. Um, on E-Trade to find open interest, you come to the um, options tab over here and you can enter in your symbol. And then when you do that, and you can see open interest right here and then volume right here as well. So this number will change daily. It can go up, it can go down, or it can stay flat. This number is volume, which is the total number of contracts that are traded per day. And this number can only go up in a given day. So um, you're not gonna see this decrease by any amount, it's going to only go up for every time that this 380 strike is traded on the call side, and it'll only go up for any time that the 380 strike is traded on the put side. Um, and this will apply to every single strike as well. And so you can assess volume and open interest over here on the options chain um, on E-Trade, and I will show you where you can find that in uh, Think or Swim as well. And so you go to the trade tab right up here, you enter in the stock that you're interested in checking out or ETF or index and you wait for it to load. And you can, um, much like where I showed you how you can check out Delta um, and Theta in the past, you can change the um, information metrics here by going to base price and quote. You can select open interest or volume. I've already pre-selected it, but if this is something that you don't have set up previously, this is where you would check it out. So this is SPY. This is one of the most actively traded ETFs ever. And you can see that it has a high open interest as well as a high volume. One thing to note is when you check out um, open interest and volume and later expirations, you'll notice that the numbers are slightly less. It's not a bad thing, but you it is just an indicator that your trade for this particular expiration might not immediately get filled, but um, it doesn't mean that you should not trade these expirations at all. It is just this one indicator of liquidity. I'm gonna run through a couple of um, stock examples of low, medium, or high open interest, but one thing that um, I wanted to let you know is that, and Tasty Trade tends to recommend looking for open interest volume um, above 1,000. I, I don't necessarily know if I agree with that. I have traded stocks that have volume um, less than 1,000, stock options that have volume less than 1,000 or open interest less than 1,000 and have been able to get into and out of the trades pretty successfully and, and at what I perceive to be fair prices. So uh, that is just one, that's just one opinion. It's, it's something that you can choose to implement for yourself if you want to. You don't necessarily have to, I don't, but um, you might hear others say something similar as well to look for open interest or volume that are over a thousand. Um, totally up to you, not, not mandatory or required in any way. Um, uh, open interest and volume can be looked at collectively or independently. And so what I mean by that is volume is going to only increase as the day goes on. So if you are trading and you're looking at a stock option, say for example, SPY or Apple, and, and it has low volume in the early part of the trading day, then I would recommend taking a look at the open interest to see, um, sorry, right here, to um, open interest to see, um, you know, how many open contracts there are to, to also get a sense of 
liquidity as well, because um, even if it's like 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning and, and the stock has low open interest, if there's a high, if the stock has low volume and there's a high open interest, then you have a better sense to know that there are going to be traders later in that same day or maybe even the next day or two or the next couple days um, who are um, probably going to want to manage their their contracts as well. And so you, you will still be able to get into and out of trades that have um, high open interest, even if the volume is low in the early part of the day. Okay, so true to form, work got in the way and I had to go deal with some fire drills related to a case that I'm working on. And so it is now it is now after hours. It's about uh, 6, 15 p.m. And um, I actually think that this is better to talk about volume and open interest and show you sort of the results of what I perceive to be high, medium, or low um, volume open interest stocks as a demonstration. And so this is um, SPY. And I am looking at the July 31st expiration because um, you know, SPY will uh, have multiple expirations that don't necessarily apply to stocks or other ETFs. And so um, we'll just focus on July 31st for now. And so as you can see, SPY is one of the most heavily traded ETFs um, available. It has a massive amount of volume. And same thing with open interest. These, This is a very liquid ETF. This is a very good one to trade options around. You will, you will be able to get into and out of these trades very quickly because the bids and the asks are going to be much tighter and you're um, more likely to get filled just because there will be a number of buyers and sellers on each end. Same thing with Apple. Another very highly liquid stock to trade options around. As you can see that it has volume in the tens of thousands. Today it has open interest in the thousands as well. Facebook, another great example of a uh, stock that has a high volume and open interest surrounding it, which makes it a good um, stock to trade options around. I'm going to show you what I perceive to be sort of the medium category. This includes Amazon. As you can see comparatively, it does have what looks like some pretty high volume. Some of these strikes um, are over a thousand, so they could be pretty liquid, but generally speaking for most of them, it's it's less than 500. Um, so you just want to be mindful of that if you're trading around Amazon. It's not as liquid as Spy, Apple, or Facebook, or some of the other really highly liquid stocks, but it is a good option, um, a good stock to trade options around. You might have to fight a little bit more to get in at the midpoint. Um, I'll just show you as you can see, August 14th is only 16 days away and it has very low volume here. So it's just one of the options that you put in sort of the medium category. Same thing with Chipotle. I don't know why Chipotle is so expensive, but it is. And it is also a stock that I would probably put in maybe the low to the medium category for volume and open interest in terms of liquidity. I actually don't trade Chipotle anymore. I got burned a couple of times and I just kind of stay away from it because I just don't want to do that anymore. But um, this is another option, stock option that you can trade around that's sort of in the low to medium category. Shopify is a good stock that I like to trade in this one a lot, um, but it's sort of the medium, medium plus category as well. You can see that it has some pretty high volume in some of these later and um, upper strikes, some pretty high open interest in these calls as well. Um, looks pretty well traded over here. Shopify did just have earnings, so it's possible that a lot of the activity today is related to uh, managing those contracts as well. We'll just take a look at Lululemon. Kind of similar in the same vein as Shopify or Chipotle, sort of in the medium range category in terms of um, volume and open interest. I have a bull case for Lululemon, and I think that it is going to, the trade that I have on will turn out. It actually did not end up getting filled today, which is fine. Maybe it'll get filled tomorrow instead. I'm also going to show you an example of what is a really low volume stock. Um, this is Starwood Properties. This is an REIT 
uh, this would be what you would call very low liquidity, very low volume and open interest. Um, and note also that the expirations available for this particular stock are very limited. Um, sometimes that happens just due to lack of interest and um, this is just one of those as well. I don't trade in Starwood, I'm just using this as an example because I prefer to trade in options that are very liquid. Same thing with Hannon Armstrong, just another example of a very low uh, option, open interest and volume stock that you probably might not want to trade around. Unless you're selling perhaps a cash secured put or maybe even a covered call, you're not going to really want to get into spreads on these particular stocks. Okay, well that's about it for me. Please do let me know if you have any questions about open interest or volume. Drop them in the comments below or you can send me an email at tiffanytradesoptions at gmail.com. I'm also on Instagram at tiffanytradesoptions. You can send a direct message there as well. Um, I'm available um, and reachable, so feel free to drop any questions you have below. If you found any value in this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. Um, leave a comment and more importantly, subscribe and share it with your friends who are interested in options trading. I'd be so grateful if you did that. Um, as always, I'm very happy that you're here. Thank you so much and I'll be chatting with you guys soon. Okay, bye.